Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us for NBA action on 2K Sports. Kevin Harlan here, joined by our analysts, Greg Anthony and Hall of Famer Doris Burke. Plus, reporting from the sidelines, another Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Hey, Dave. Kevin, good evening. Carl Anthony Towns is certainly the franchise player now for the Timberwolves. Kat said, you lead by action and you lead by words. I'm more of the action guy. When things get tough, I've got to be the guy that leads the charge. Kevin, he knows his role and he knows his place atop the Wolves franchise. Knows it very well, D.A. Thank you so much. Here's a look at some of the stats for Carl Anthony Towns. His effective field goal percentage, a favorite stat of the analytics crowd, has been on the way down over his past 10 games. His game isn't as well-rounded as it needs to be. And checking out Minnesota's opening lineup. They've got James Johnson. He's out there with Carl Anthony Towns. And it's a Kogi in at the small forward position. And for the Pacers, Sabonis and Turner up front. Ogden and Oladipo, the backcourt duo. And it's Warren in at the three, the small forward. Greg, we're still involved in the conference system. Does it hold relevance as we're looking here at the standings midseason? You know, for travel distance, yes, and, and there's also some tradition at stake. I, I mean, look, the, that said, in a perfect world, you'd like to see the best 16 teams make the playoffs each year, but we've had, you know, imbalance in conferences forever, so that's not going to change, uh, but sometimes change is just necessary. How about quickly for the playoffs? Would you like to reseed and take the top 16s, 1 through 16? I would. I think that'd be a great idea. And the Timberwolves have made it clear Carl Anthony Towns is their franchise player. He's the guy they're building around. And the first one at the line is good. And we've heard Towns for years pronouncing his happiness with the Timberwolves. Last season, Greg, as the losses piled up, some rumors that he was getting frustrated. Well, we've seen this pattern with the Timberwolves before, right? Kevin Garnett, Kevin Love, all-star big man who ended up leaving the Twin Cities to win titles. In the summer of 2018, Carl Anthony Towns signing that five-year, $158 million max contract. Greg, given that he has a reputation of being frugal, that may last him a while. Consider after he was drafted for a while, he didn't own a car. He actually walked around Minneapolis. Now, that could be a little cold in those chilly winter months. And he's got his first free throw of the game.
First free throw is good. Hey, well, you look at the development of DeMontis Sabonis. Few thought he could be a franchise caliber player. We might need to reconsider that given his play last year. No good on the second, so he hits one of two. And Sabonis putting up all-star numbers last season. Greg, you and I think he's just getting started. Yeah, I mean, Sabonis only dominates a few areas of the game. Not a big defender, but he could be a 25 and 14 type down the line. He's still under 25 years old and has room to grow as a player. Oladipo goes in, and the rejection by Town. Sabonis, no good. Boy, this guy is a good finisher, so he misses a chippy. That's tough to take. A Kogi misses. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Rodgen the pass to turn, and a great assist by Rodgen as that one goes in. The ability to play through contact so important for Miles Turner. He's got the size and strength to finish through it. Outside, Green. Here's Towns. And Oladipo pulls it down. Well, seized up just a little bit at the last second. That's one he normally converts. Outside, Warren. Shot clock at six. Hope they get it back. Turner. That doesn't go in. Had a chance, though, to take the lead. To the paint. Here's McLaughlin. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. Well, what a job punching the ball to the interior and finishing in the paint. Nice. I didn't right side. Oladipo against Green. Oladipo misses. Great rim protection to prevent him from converting. Beautiful. For three, a Kobe. The rebound by Turner. Pacers trail by three. Here's Oladipo, and finished off by Oladipo. Oladipo is a star, and he powers through the contact to convert. Here's McLaughlin. He's coming off a 10-point game against Atlanta. And it was never all about himself. He came away with a lot of assists in that game and just kind of kept everybody in the mix. I think he's got to settle down because right now it feels like he's rushing, like he's forcing some shots. This quarter he has been completely bothered. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. And their post play has been really solid right off the bat. That's the turn. Outside Warren. Back to Turner. There's the dish to Warren. Fires from the line. No good that time. And Minnesota now the other way. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to Atlanta. The, the failure to make shots on a consistent basis, that, that's going to put you behind the eight ball all night. I thought most of the shots they took were low percentage looks. The key in the NBA is, can you get your best scorers into the... Oh, wow. Wow. Boy, big time athleticism from Victor Oladipo up and off the ground in a hurry. Here's McLaughlin. Looking at his numbers, he averages a bit over nine points a game. There's the three. Good, and the assist goes to Towns. McLaughlin's got five now. Impressive awareness from Carl Anthony Towns. Dependable at finding teammates with a terrific look there. Teardrop shot. Rebound, Minnesota. Here's McLaughlin. He's got five. Green, the pass to Towns. And that's going to be a travel. We have got to see that sensational mobile one block again. And those are plays that get you in front and keep you in front. And some changes here for the Pacers. Doug McDermott, he's checked in for Warren. And it's Lamb in there for Victor Oladipo. Timberwolves also changing it up. 
Omari Spellman has come in for Jensen. And Jake Lehman subbed in for Josh Akogi. There's the pass to Sabonis. Over in the corner, Lamb. Outside to Brockton. Pass to Turner. Towns with the steal. Nice D from Sabonis. And so it's Lamb with it. He brings it up for Indiana. They trail by seven. They're looking for a little bit of redemption in this one after the loss to them here last time. I'll tell you, they played hard. They drew fouls, but they could not convert at the line. One of the things that you know when you miss free throws is you're giving the team opposite you all the momentum. You're failing to capitalize on their mistakes. And the call will be against Sabonis. That is his first foul of the game. And some changes here for the Pacers. Goga Bitadze is checked in for Miles Turner. Markeith Morris comes in for Sabonis. And Raul Neto is subbed in for Brogdon. And a change for the Timberwolves. Herning Gomez is checked in. Here's Wayman. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Boy, a clean, close look. What a missed opportunity. No coverage that time. Well, McDermott increasingly becoming a threat to pull up off the dribble. This is a rhythm shooter who knows how to capitalize with room. Timeout called first of the game for Minnesota. Boy, when you think about Doug McDermott, the last few years with the incredible shooting he brings, he's also been efficient. And though the volume is limited, this guy has done as good a job as he can picking his spots. there's a chance let's show you the teams that have thrived on the fast break this season the Pacers in fifth yeah I mean they've got the athletes to run the break all game long so that's their edge they're always looking to take advantage Aston McLaughlin outside green just five on the clock Good work defensively by Morris. Pacers trail by four. Inside. No good from Lamb. Green taking his time here. Pass to McLaughlin. Here's Lehman. Morris with the rebound. Indiana's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Nice shot by McDermott. Well, we know that McDermott came into the league with a reputation as a dead-eye shooter. Get your hands up and contest or he'll make you pay. And the pass to Lehman. Passes to Hernan Gomez. Lays it up and banks it in. Outstanding pass on time and on target. Indiana's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Neto kicks to land. Boy, at some point you've got to realize there might be a better option standing next to you. This guy has not made one basket in this period. And he comes up with the deuce. And they've done well at taking advantage of some late defensive rotations and getting the ball in the paint. Land dishes to Morris. Uses the glass to finish the lane. Good timing on the pick and roll by Morris. Makes the right move on cue. Pass to Spellman. Nice ball movement by Minnesota. Hernan Gomez. It's a two-pointer. That one's not going to go. 
So the Pacers will take it the other way. This game coming after a loss against the Pistons. Well, when you're facing a team that's feeding off the crowd's energy, you have to bring your A game and they didn't do that defensively. One thing you know, Greg, is you've got to pack your defense in the suitcase if you're going to win on the road, and they simply did not bring it. And he knocks down the first one. He's perfect from the line this time. Minnesota in the lead. Here's McLaughlin. Five points in the game. Pass to Hernan Gomez. Two points. That one goes. Hernan Gomez has got six. That's their third straight make off an assist. Neto surveying the floor. And a wide open look for Lamb. Can't tie it up as that one's no good. This guy has not been a factor at all in this quarter, and it has hurt the team. McLaughlin, the pass to Reed. Not going to go that time. And it's the Pacers taking it the other way. Morris finds Lamb. 125 left here in the opening quarter. No good. To the middle. Here's Hernan Gomez. Got it for his fourth field goal of the game on just five shots. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. The pass could be Thompson. Here's Neto. Lamb with the ball. Lamb missing again. Wow, this defense is blanking him down the stretch, and that's certainly hurting his team's chances. And so it looks like the Timberwolves will retain possession here. Kogi's checked in for Amari Spellman. There's 45 seconds left in the first. Just five to shoot. They get it again. Oh, Kogi. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's going to be on Jeremy Lamb. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. This is his first free throw of the game. This season, 88% on the line, so he has been in a comfort zone. And the first one drops. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. 34 seconds left to play here in the first. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Lamb passes to be Johnson. Neto, that's a two-pointer. Here's Vitadze. Nine-point game is last outing. To end the drought, and Neto is good for three. And we reach the end of the first quarter. The Timberwolves on top, up by four. We'll get right back to the action when we return. If you're like me and curious about Victor Oladipo's overall philosophy, listen to this. I think the biggest thing is just the relentlessness. No matter what's going on, no matter how hard you want to do well or if you mess up, just keep going. Just keep playing hard. Just give it your all. And, um, you can live with the results after that because you know you gave it 110%. You know, Greg, I haven't ever heard anyone question his effort. He came into the league as a raw athlete. Now he's a skilled assassin. 
And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And guys, what's your take so far on the Timberwolves? What we saw in that first quarter, they won their matchups defensively. I think across the board, a number of guys who've done a great job guarding multiple positions. So on the floor for Minnesota, and it's Reed in at the center. A moment now to see how the schedule is looking for the Indiana Pacers. On Tuesday, they'll go up against LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. Then on Wednesday, they'll be matching up against Kyle Lowry and the Toronto Raptors. And that game against Milwaukee, it's going to be a, a bit of a measuring stick for them. See just how they stack up with a team that most would feel has the edge. The first one falls. Malcolm Brogdon's checked in for Raul Neto. The Timberwolves also with the sub. Johnson's checked in. He hits both from the strike. And so it's Brogdon who brings up the ball for the Indiana Pacers. Four-point game. Well, they've got the Lakers ahead of them after this game. In the next game, it'll be played in Los Angeles. And that one will start off a three-game road trip for the team. Down to five on the shot clock. Indiana needs to get a shot off. Oladipo for three. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. Here's a Kogi off with the layup. It's three on three on the fast break. Here's Warren. The quick look no good that time. Timberwolves leading by four. Here's Johnson. Count it. Johnson's got his second bucket of the night. They are just killing him on the interior. Logged in the pass to be touched. Oladipo outside. Johnson against Brogdon. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. And one thing I like about Brogdon is his size. A huge 6'10 wingspan for a guard. Gives him an advantage in matchups. Lets him finish over smaller defenders as well. That free throw good from Brogdon. And great with Brogdon and his size, it allows flexibility on defense as well. Yeah, I mean, it makes switching on the pick and roll easier with him up top. There isn't a lot of flash to how Brogdon plays on the floor, but you can't deny how impactful he is in all facets. Looking at who's out there now for the Pacers. Miles Turner comes in for Goga Bitadze. And Zabonis is checked in for Morris. You can tell when he steps to the line the kind of confidence he has in himself. It's written all over his body language. Here's Warren, and it's blocked. I'll tell you, it feels all night like this guy's been forcing shots, rushing shots. He's really struggling on the offensive end. Listen, this guy is not the most dangerous threat from there, but you have got to honor the shooting a little bit. Quarter two and just under two and a half minutes gone by. Well, that's the attitude Malcolm Brogdon hopes to bring every night. You can't be passive. He is going to attack on the interior. A Kogi, the pass to Johnson. Here's McLaughlin. He has five. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. McLaughlin's got the lead up to seven now for the Timberwolves. Logged in the pass to Sabonis. Oladipo outside. Back to Sabonis for three. Brockton. Carl Anthony Towns with the rebound. Towns has got seven rebounds in the game. Johnson gets the bucket. Of the two offenses here tonight, you can tell theirs is just a bit more in sync. And I think because of that, they've gotten the better looks to start this basketball game. And Oladipo, here we go. A three from Warren and a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Brogdon's got three assists tonight. Malcolm Brogdon has been rock solid since he won the Rookie of the Year award. This guy's capable as a scorer, and what a pretty pass there. Here's a Kogi, guarded by Oladipo. Well, you know, they're in the lead, but he's still been frustrated from an offensive standpoint. For three, Brogdon. 
Rebound by Akogi. Timberwolves leading by six. Here's McLaughlin. Seven points in the game. Takes the 13-footer. Towns, no luck. I'm sure he's kicking himself. He hates to blow that kind of opportunity. Now, here's Brogdon. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against Detroit. He was also an excellent setup man as well. This guy was cutting the defense to shreds with incredible passing. I know he's got to be frustrated right now, but the team is fighting from behind. He's got to stay with it. His shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. The Timberwolves have made all of their free throws so far tonight, going six for six. Wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. Pacers trail by nine. Outside, Zabonis. Dishes it to Oladipo. Pope loose. Green against Oladipo. Green gets it to go. And the Timberwolves lead by 11. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. And that's typical of this guy. He's always reading the situation, reacting quickly and capitalizing. And the dunk by Towns. Oh, the defense has got to do more than that. Carl Anthony Towns embarrassing them. Passes it to Oladipo. And the shot goes in. Hit works well there. Not much resistance from the D. It takes incredible effort to stay connected to the hip of the offensive player. You've got to want to work. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. The Timberwolves have gone a perfect seven of seven from the line tonight. No good on that one. And some changes here for the Pacers. McDermott comes in for T.J. Warren. And Jeremy Lamb subbed in for Victor Oladipo. That one is no good. And Doris, last season, DeMontis Sabonis turned a corner in terms of development. He became a key cog in this offense. That's exactly right, Greg. Coach trusted him in more pick and roll situations. He allowed him to do more heavy lifting within the offense. And Sabonis has got great basketball IQ. He understands how to make reads, set solid screens. This is a guy who makes people around him better. McLaughlin, the pass to Green. Fires from deep, knocks down the three ball. Green's got five. I'll tell you, you are playing with fire anytime you leave this guy open, and they just got burned. Lamb finds Brogdon. And it's in there. Well, you like that he shakes off that rocky first period and knocks down a shot. Nice. And the Timberwolves call time. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. It's tough to hide your communications. Teams go to great lengths to try to do it, but sometimes to no avail.
Indiana making a change here. Meadows checked in and a change for the Timberwolves. Juan Hernan Gomez, he's checked in for Jordan McLaughlin. Pass to Towns. And good, and it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. Towns has got four points in the quarter. Neto kicks to Sabonis. Pass to McDermott. The pass to Lamb. Lock at six. Shoots. McDermott can't get it to go. Minnesota leading by 12. Layman pass to Green. Here's Spellman. The second effort. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And a chance now to take a look at some numbers for DeMontis Sabonis. He's been dominant over the last month, averaging about 16 points, 10 rebounds, and three assists. And what is crazy is that these numbers might not even do his game justice. He's, he's been phenomenal. Feels like every night this guy does something that just blows your mind. So fun to watch. Someone the other players look up to. Markeith Morris has checked in for Indiana. Town drops them both. This is what makes him a challenge to stop. He will beat you from the floor and he can also beat you from the line. Here's Neto, headed by Green, and he'll shoot free throws here. Clearly fouled on that shot that time, the whistle blowing. I mean, even from over here, you can see that one pretty clearly. Indiana shooting their seventh and eighth free throw attempts for the game right here. At the line for two. That free throw missing. Goga Bitadze is checked in for Turner. The Timberwolves also with the sub. Reed's checked in. And the second free throw, good. And so Green will bring it up for Minnesota. Passes it to Towns. Puts it up from 15. That one, no good. And it's the Pacers taking it the other way. The steal. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Here's Lehman. He's just scored his first basket with that shot, making him one for four. Well, the touch and the focus. What a pretty move in the lane. Neto, the pass to Morris. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That one is on Towns. What a story for Marquise Morris, taking exactly one pick before his twin brother Marcus back in 2011. And free throw good for Morris. Morris drops them both. Timberwolves leading by 13. Outside green. Five to shoot to the inside. He gets that one. And the Timberwolves lead by 15. Yeah, and they're shooting really starting to pick up here in the second. Here's the teardrop. The fadeaway. Up again, Morris. Great positioning on the putback. You know, defense forgets about Morris and pays the price. He loves to score and can do it a number of ways. 
Green against Morris. And Green slams it in. Not the kind of aggressive defense they need to cut into the lead. Yeah, you have to protect the rim, Greg, a little better. They're just too slow to react. You can't afford to sleepwalk through possessions. What's going on out there? Pass to Hernan Gomez. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Green's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. We've got 108 left in the first half of the game. Has to be Thompson. Here's Meadow. Banked in off the glass. Meadow's got six. And that's an example of playing big, adapting to the situation. Well, major height disadvantage. He recognizes that and still able to score it. Now McDermott, he points his last outing. Here's Lamb, off target from three-point range. He's so frustrated. Hasn't had a make-all game. It's making it very difficult for them to find any success. Six-second difference between shot and game clock. Green, the pass to Reed, and another three for Minnesota. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Lamb with the ball. Looking to get back on track here. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves holding a big 18-point lead to close the quarter. Their defense has been active and effective. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Carl, you guys have built a lead. What is the key to maintaining or increasing it going it forward? I mean, don't change what we're doing. Just stay together, keep passing the ball, uh, keep playing great defense, and just keep making them think and make decisions, uh, especially the difficult ones. You had the advantage in the first half. We'll see if you can keep that advantage in the second half. Thanks for your time, man. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, thank you. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Shaq is here. Kenny's here. You're watching the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. And in Kentucky, Coach Calipari famously forbid Carl Anthony Towns to shoot three-pointers. Kenny, you look at how Towns shoots in the NBA. Maybe Coach Cal regrets that decision. Well, I think Cal wanted him to demonstrate that he could dominate inside. You know, but this guy has the ability <laughs> to shoot the three. He was the number one pick overall, but I would have let him shoot them threes in Kentucky. And Kenny, I agree with you, because growing up, he's his game up to the He's got a big man body, but he likes to play that wing. And that does it for our halftime show. We now take you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the third period. After a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. Earl Anthony Towns has been sensational. Well, it didn't take him long to get that double-double. Already has it halfway through the game. That takes a level of aggression and a level of focus, and he has brought it all night thus far. Well, we've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. Well, we've got a moment. Let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade all fueled up for the second half. And so in the game for the Pacers. Oladipo is the two with Warren playing small forward. Sabonis and Turner up front. And it's Brogdon in at the point. He's made one and missed one so far in the game. An okay season at the free throw line for him so far, sitting right around 76%. And he makes the first. You know, it's such a pleasure to watch DeMontis Sabonis play the game. Yes, he's got absolutely God-given talent, but he also has an incredible understanding and feel for the game, and he plays it the right way. And Sabonis drops them both. 
Timberwolves leading by 16. McLaughlin the pass to Towns. To the right side. Here's McLaughlin. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. It's going to be on Victor Oladipo. And these are his second and third free throws tonight. And take a look at what he's been able to do at the free throw line. 82% more than acceptable. First one falls for him. That misses, so he splits the free throws. Pacers trail by 17. And here is Brockton. Now here's Johnson. Down low. The pass to Okogi. Offline with his three. Outside to Brockton. Passes it to Turner. He dishes it to Warren. Here's Sabonis. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. Towns has got rebound number 11 for him here tonight. And the basket by Akogi. Yes. Attacking in transition the most consistent way to generate easy looks. The very definition of quality transition offense. If it can end at the cup, it's exactly where you want it. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Greg, you look at the career of Victor Oladipo, drafted second overall out of Indiana but didn't break out in his NBA career until coming to the pace. A bit of a late bloomer. And, Kevin, Oladipo is a prime example of some players just needing time. Uh, it also shows you how much the right situation helps a player. Oladipo always had the talent. He just found a place to foster. And with Victor Oladipo, the impact he has on the scoreboard is huge. But you can't discount how great he is as a defender. Oh, there's no doubt, Greg. Think about it. The last time he played a full season, he was first-team All-NBA defense. This guy has great length on his arms. He can cause a lot of miscues with his ability to pressure. And he's strong enough to deal with wings as well. So there's a versatility there that you love. With the teardrop, and it's sent back by Turner. I tell you, you love the attitude of Miles Turner. No one is getting off these shots when he's nearby. No one. Sometimes a player is born with a passer's mindset. He deals it with conviction. Pass to Johnson. And it's Johnson with the jam. I'll tell you, that vertical ability he has puts him in select company in NBA power forwards. May not have great size, but boy, he plays bigger than it. A wide open look here for Oladipo. But they recover it. Warren on the wing. He's got five. Turner finds a bonus. That one drops for him. Turner's got four points now in the quarter. Well, there's a level of commitment that Miles Turner is showing on the glass right now. Goes hard to get rebounds and get an opportunity for the putback. Here's a Kogi. Sweet little floater. A Kogi's got 13. Boy, that's beautiful touch on the floater. And let's remember, not everyone has that shot in their arsenal. Pass to Oladipo. Uncovered. Count it. Good. Well, it's a difficult guard contending with Victor Oladipo because this guy is prepared on the catch to make a shot. Towns, the pass to McLaughlin. Six on the shot clock. A Kogi misses. One made three form for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Oladipo, good. He's got 12. Oladipo has a lot of shots at his disposal, including that pretty floater. And the Timberwolves call time here.
Timberwolves making a switch here. And, and with the pause here, how about the stats for Johnson? He's averaging about seven points a game, four rebounds, and three assists. I mean, the numbers aren't bad on their own, but, but he knows that he can help this team in a bigger way. And sometimes it comes down to the flow of the offense. One night it's your night, another night perhaps it's somebody else's. Spellman the pass to Okogi. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. He's had four chances at the line, made them all. Two shots. First free throw is good. He's off on the second. And it's Sabonis with the ball for the Pacers. They trail by 14. And so it looks like the Pacers will retain possession here. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And read the plate perfectly. Gets himself in the air at the right moment. Terrific denial. Brogdon kicks to Turner. Yo, set it up. Switch. Screen, screen, screen. Oladipo taking his time here. Shot clock at five. Turner finds Oladipo. From deep. The offensive rebound. Sabonis. And at last, they get one to fall. Domantas Sabonis has the ability to keep possessions alive. He's crafty getting position. Gets to the offensive window. That's nicely done. Now the pass to Okogi. With the floater. He lays it in. Akogi's got seven now in this quarter. Pacers trail by 14. Brogdon the pass to Turner. And a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Brogdon's got five assists in the game. Pass to Spellman. Here's Akogi. He's covered by Warren. Here's Akogi. No good on the shot. Good work defensively by Turner. A three from Warren, and Indiana, another three. Yeah, there's six points on consecutive three balls. They're finding holes now in the deep. Here's Spellman. No points in the game yet for him. The Timberwolves working the ball around now. Here's McLaughlin. It's rebounded by Indiana. Oladipo, left side. That one falls. Oladipo's got 14. What a night for Victor Oladipo. Boy, when he gets rolling, it is hard to slow him down. McLaughlin, the pass to Vanderbilt. Here's Spellman. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Here's a Kogi. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. That's his third personal call. And this is his fourth trip to the free throw line tonight. And the first one drops. So Indiana ends up with a new group on the floor. And then for Minnesota, Reed's checked in, and it's Juan Hernan Gomez in for Jordan McLaughlin. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Pacers trail by eight. Pass to Lamb. Looking to end his cold spell. And it falls over the rim and in. Lamb's got his first points in this one. This guy is a pick-your-poison kind of player. Very hard defensively to cover all your bases with him. Vanderbilt's shot is good. And he found the soft spot in the D on that possession. 
Indiana's gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. Here's Neto. He has six, and the layup's good off the glass. Neto's got his third bucket of the night. And they've really gotten on track here in the second half. After that shaky start, the field goal percentage steadily climbing. They couldn't make anything in that first break. Here's Reed. Morris with the rebound. Morris has got five rebounds tonight. Well, in the rebounding game, at least, it's been a strong physical performance for him. Here's Vitadze. He's averaging around five and a half points a game. And that one is good. Lamb's got his second basket of the game. And they're showing much more focus here in the second half. More effort as well. And their offense starting to show signs of life. Has to read from 17 feet out. And he connects with the jumper. Assist from Reed's got seven points in the game. And so it's Neto with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Pacers. Six-point game. Vitadze, the pass to Lamb. He's off on that one. The Timberwolves go the other way with it. Next matchup, they'll be home against the Suns. They start a three-game homestand with that game. And there's the pass to Reed. The Pacers pull it in. Morris has got six rebounds now in the game. And there are the Pacers with another bucket. You know, you have to like that he's still getting quality touches and delivering now after getting blanked in the first half. Gray, good to see Jeremy Lamb back on the floor after his injury. He can still be a productive win, you think, off the bench for this team. No doubt about it. More of a finisher for this team. Lamb shouldn't have any lingering effects of coming off that ACL. His game's diverse enough to get shots anywhere in the half court, and he'll continue to be a productive player for the foreseeable future. Six to shoot. Morris finds Lamb. He gets it in there. And now, just a two-point Timberwolves lead. Wow, he looks like a completely different player in this half. He's found his rhythm. Okogi, good on the shot. Okogi's got 20. What an aggressive mindset in this period. He's starting to take over. Here's Neto. He's got eight. He tops a Reed with the rebound. Inside. Vanderbilt's shot is good. Now it's a six-point Timberwolves lead. Have to love the ball distribution. Keep everyone involved. We've got 113 left in the third quarter of the game. Here's Neto. Let's it go from deep. And the Pacers, another three. After an ice-cold start to this game, he is pouring it on here in the second half. And the Timberwolves call time. In addition to going over the game plan and making whatever necessary adjustments have to be made, Greg, this timeout also the time for players to get rehydrated or hydrate for the first time with some Gatorade. Plenty of basketball still to be played here, and they have to get recharged. That's a great point. Without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a, of a game. And that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have got to be hydrated. change here. Brogdon's checked in. And here are the numbers for Brogdon. Over the last month, he has been spectacular. He's putting up about 20 points per game, six assists, and five rebounds. He's been nothing short of fantastic during that stretch. Offense coming very easily for him. And so much of it to me is his ability to read the floor, make the right decision, and then go right after the action he wants. Brogdon inside the line and off the left side of the rim, and it swirls in for him. Uh, so much confidence right now with Malcolm Brogdon. The catch and shoot, so pretty. Green with the ball. Guarded now by Morris. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. 
That's his first this is his first trip to the line tonight. And all you need to do is see his free throw percentage, guys. 90 for the season to know what kind of year he's having. First free throw is good. Miles Turner, he's checked in for the Pacers. Both free throws good from Green. Pacers trail by six. Now Brogdon, eight points for him. Outside, Lamb takes a three, and a great assist by Brogdon as that one goes in. Brogdon's got six assists now in the game. Back right after this. And how about a look now at our assist of the game? Brought to you by State Farm. And, and I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. Well, making the game easy for your teammates. All about putting them in a position to score. That's pretty. And with these teams locked in a very close contest, this fourth quarter promises to be a good one. And a look at the five for the Timberwolves to start the fourth. They've got Towns. Green is up there with Lehman. And it's McLaughlin into the point guard position. And Towns gets it to go. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. Lamb passes to Brogdon the line by Indiana and they get it back again I mean how many rebounds offensively have they had everything's going right for them today now this is an athletic power forward and Morris out quicks the defense to the rim here's Towns and that one is good with the extra effort on the glass Towns has got four points now in the quarter outside Lamb from outside off the mark Minnesota leading by five to the inside and Towns throws it down and just tacks a few more points onto their lead with the tomahawk ah, that's bringing it down hard about a minute and a half through the fourth quarter now and now Minnesota on the fast break lets it go with a three good and it's green picking up the assist and now it's a 10-point Timberwolves lead, and the Pacers call time here. And the lack of rim protection, top of the list. And the question they're going to have to answer to me is, is it a problem with the scheme, or is it a problem with matchups? Sabonis, he's checked in for Morris. Warren comes in for Doug McDermott. And it's Oladipo in for Lamb. Johnson, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. 
Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Thanks, guys. I got a chance to hear what Indiana's head coach was saying to the team. He said, do you want this game? Don't tell me about it. Show me and show your teammates. We've got to play better, and we've got to play harder if we're going to come back. Guys? And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Oladipo outside. Passes it to Warren. Will it go? And the Pacers can't get it to go. Well, you simply have to shake that one off, right? You can't let that kind of missed opportunity bother you. Back to Johnson. Outside, Towns. That's in, coming off the assist from Johnson. Towns has got 11 in the second half. I'll tell you, it's one thing to do this at home, another to do it in a hostile environment. Boy, just sheer dominance, the ability to step into enemy territory and flat out take over. This is impressive. Timberwolves leading by 15 to the paint, and it's Green with the jam. Yeah, they're rolling right now. That lead continues to grow. And one of the things that's helped that is they're getting it done on both ends. Terrific focus on offense, and they're locked in defensively. And there's the bucket from Victor Oladipo. Boy, the strength of Victor Oladipo is on display there, effortlessly absorbing the contact. Nicely done. Here's McLaughlin. He's guarded by Brogdon. Pass to Lehman for three. And another three for Minnesota. And this offense is in a perfect rhythm. And you can see how they're finishing their plays. Well, what great game planning. What great execution. It doesn't get much better than this. Oladipo finds a bonus. Oladipo, the pass to Brogdon. Just four to shoot. Step back shot. A rebound by the Timberwolves. And now here's Johnson, the fast break chance. It's hauled in by Warren. Warren's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And so it's Brogdon who brings up the ball for Indiana. They trail by 18. Pass to Warren. Warren with the jam. T.J. Warren finishes with authority. I'll give you a salute, sir. Johnson outside. To the middle. And the dunk by Towns. And no surprise here, right? This guy is not only a gifted player, but he is so smart on the offensive end. And Turner kicks to Oladipo. Great D that time from Green. Timberwolves leading by 18. And the pass to Lehman. And here's Towns. Towns is double. Nice D from Oladipo. Outside Warren. And he uses the glass on the layup. Warren's got four points now in the quarter. Well, T.J. Warren's frame and game perfectly suited for a finish on the interior. And the call is going to be, yes, yes, it is, an illegal screen. And not the most common call you'll see in the NBA, but hard to argue that pick wasn't illegal. It is really difficult to get your feet completely set, to stay completely still. It's almost surprising to me that it isn't called more often. A Kogi's checked in for Jake Lehman. And it's Green missing. Pacers trail by 16. Here's Oladipo. Carl Anthony Towns with the rebound. Green against Warren. Outside Green. A Kogi, the pass to McLaughlin. Off target with his three. Indiana's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Oladipo outside. And it's Oladipo with the jam. 
This guy, an explosive athlete, Victor Oladipo, no doubt. Passes it to Towns. And that's a foul called on T.J. Warren. T.J. Warren. That's his first foul. That's his first personal foul. Here's Johnson. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. T.J. Warren. Warren picks one up. That's his second personal foul. At the line of two. James and he makes the first. And Johnson drops them both. Pacers trail by 16. Brogdon with it. It's Oladipo on the wing, guarded by Green. And there's the bucket from Victor Oladipo. Well, right now, Oladipo is just manipulating the defense in the pick and roll situation. The man is doing work. Outside, down. The Timberwolves again can't hit. And Brogdon has got the ball here for the Pacers. Turner inside. Sabonis trying to get open. Shots good by Turner. And that's 10 straight points in the paint. The defense, nowhere to be found. Feeds it to Towns. Sabonis grabs the board. Sabonis has got 12 rebounds here tonight. Big time effort. And the shot by Warren, no good. Minnesota leading by 12. And the basket by Akogi. Akogi's got 22. You gotta love his hustle, leaving the defense no time to react. The finish and transition, nice and easy. Time called here, Indiana decides to talk it over. Carl Anthony Towns with a strong contribution so far in this one. He's just really a one-man wrecking crew down low. And with this timeout, they've got to make some adjustments because he's been steady inside. present our New Balance player of the game, Carl Anthony Town. And I would point to his shooting percentage as the key reason he's our pick. And that sounds simple, but he hadn't tried to do too much. He hasn't tried to force his shots, just kind of waited and worked to get good looks. And in the end, he's found plenty of them. They lost two straight coming into this one, and he knew he needed to put his foot down. He showed leadership tonight, getting them back on the winning track to Oladipo. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That one's on Johnson. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. Oladipo taking two shots. Two shots. First one falls for him. There are a few things that you love about Victor Oladipo. Number one, the energy and effort he plays with every night. His willingness to carry a load on the offensive end. But more than that, guys, it's the tone and tenor of unselfishness that he sets for this entire group. Oladipo hits them both. And after attempting no free throws in the first half, now he's putting the defense back on its heels. Outside, Green. 
Trying to find Towns. Gets it to him. Chalk up two there. 26 points for Carl Anthony Towns. Boy, pure dominance from Carl Anthony Towns. This guy is a go-to, legit scorer with multiple weapons. And the Pacers can't get it to go. To the inside. And the dunk by Towns. You've got to love his aggressiveness to finish inside. Well, his leaping ability gives him a great advantage. Pass to Oladipo. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Oladipo's got 24. Well, you can tell that over time, Oladipo has gained more and more confidence in his scoring ability, especially that close to the 10. McLaughlin, the pass to Towns. Shoots over Turner. Sabonis grabs the board. Sabonis has got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. Turner trying to free himself up. And there's the bucket from Victor Oladipo. Well, as usual, this guy cooking on the offensive end. But right now, the other guys on his team have got to step forward. The pass to Green. Here's McLaughlin. A Kogi for three, and DeMontis Sabonis pulls it down. And clearly, we will not be witnessing a spirited comeback tonight, albeit as exciting as that would be. This was an excellent all-around performance for the Timberwolves. Not only did they shoot the ball better, but they had more assists. Yeah, I thought the passing in terms of finding the open man gave them the higher percentage shots. The ball movement was key for the win. And so this will now translate to 14 wins on the season. And continued dominance against this team, winning both of their matchups this season. And we watched them all night long. No one could really stop them. Just another excellent game it was for Carl Anthony Towns. Efficient productivity. You love what this guy has given to you on the offensive end. Spirited performance. You love to get this kind of win, especially on the road. You've got to be able to block out all distractions in enemy territory. This team did a tremendous job staying focused on the task at hand. And so it's the Timberwolves taking care of business here. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, gee, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You, you know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And that about wraps it up. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldrich, and the rest of our terrific crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long and good night, everyone.